So everybody seems to be going crazy over my spinning easel. Yeah, why wouldn't they? It's mystical. I know. If only they knew. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. <laughs> Hola, you amazing artist! I want to thank you guys, first of all, for your response to the last video that I posted because I was extremely nervous putting that video out there. But there seems to be a question about my spinning easel. A lot of you are asking me where I got it, or where I acquired it, or where I bought it, and the fact of the matter is that I did not buy it. I built my own spinning easel. I remember the day you built that. You were out in the yard for like six hours, and then there it was. I pretty much built this easel out of scrap wood that I had lying around and different pieces that I had lying around because I had a live show that I was going to do and I was terrified of doing this live show because in the studio I flip things around and I move them around and I thought to myself how am I supposed to do that on stage without making a huge mess and thus the spinning easel came to be. working in the studio and you were like I'm gonna go build some stuff I'll be back yeah yeah I was pretty nervous about my first live show so it, it became a priority really quickly because I built it I don't necessarily have like an instruction for you this easel came together by necessity from different pieces that happened to fit in the way that they did and I've tried sketching it out for artists that always ask me like where did I get it and stuff so I did create a small sketch, but it's not really that great. But I did have to replace something. It'll give you more insight into how I built it. All the spinning easel is, is something that uses a Lazy Susan. I got these from American Science and Surplus, and essentially what this does is it allows the pieces to spin individually. And I am replacing Lazy Susan with mine because I got a small, cheaper version. Make sure that all the ends are even and so that the balance is correct, that it balances perfectly. And just have a Lazy Susan and voila, you have a spinning easel. So this is, I mean, this worked for years, and it still works. It's just not strong enough for some of the bigger pieces. There's too much wobble in it. You can see I lost some of my ball bearings. Yeah, if all you can find is the stuff that they have at Home Depot or Lowe's, the, those Lazy Susans, that'll work just fine. As long as you're not working on pieces that are too heavy. So the base of the unit is, this is uh, just a, an easel. As you can see, one of those tabletop easels. And the reason I used the tabletop easel was because I wanted to be able to lean it backwards and forwards. And then I basically just screwed in a piece of wood on the front here. If you could find something better than this, I would definitely find something. I, I kind of wish I had built something myself because I constantly have to like screw in these little screws here because they come out on their own. I'll probably build more of these in the future for myself and just improve on the design as I go. What you're gonna wanna do is separate these. This is like industrial, so um, it's really hard to move aside, which is gonna work great when I'm using it up there on the canvas piece. I'm using two pieces of wood. If you could use just one piece of wood, that would be awesome but I'm using two pieces of wood and these two pieces of wood are gonna go on the front so that my easel section has something to mount to. Keep in mind that you're gonna to have to mount this on the other piece so whenever you're thinking of where you're going to attach this or how big the wood is in the front, remember you gotta to get to these holes underneath. Got a nice solid piece. Now let's let's mount it on the uh, easel. So this is where balance comes in, because wherever you put your easel, you're gonna want to make sure that it is balanced right in the center. Luckily, I have where the other one was at, so I'm just gonna go off of that right in the center.
if you're going to work on a really, really big uh, piece or you're going to build a giant spinning easel, then I suggest you use much more heavy duty wood than I'm using. That works. Yes, perfect. This, you really want to make sure this is centered on here. So we are going to find out where the center is. I made this front board the same size as the back board so I could uh, pretty much measure out to make sure that they're centered perfectly. And then just throw one screw in there. Throw one screw in there to keep it where you need it while you screw in the rest. Just because you want to make sure that the front front part of your easel doesn't fall off. As far as the easel function itself, I mean I had to figure out how to make this for live shows. So this actually comes apart and this is, you know, there's a nut and bolt on here that holds this together. You don't have to make anything so complicated if you're just going to use it in your studio. The way that I was able to figure out what to do as far as holding the painting in was to have two 2x2s two two going out from the center. And then this essentially is just a 2x2 two two and a 1x2 two with a big bolt in it. And I've got two screws sticking out to hold the painting. This goes in like this and then I tighten it and I'm able to essentially just adjust this back and forth on here to make it whatever size I need. Like I said, I built this thing out of wood scraps in our backyard because I was doing a live painting and didn't know uh, how I was going to be able to do everything without bending over and throwing my pieces around. It's all I can really tell you. I can't really give you a step by step, so good luck. Good luck with uh, building your own spinning easel. The easel got built because I could not find anything like this out in the market. And the things that I did find that were kind of similar and, and did a little bit of the similar thing, they were super, super expensive. I don't really have a cost on how much the easel cost me to build because I created it with the wood that I had in the studio and outside in our outdoor studio, old barrels and things like that. But I know for a fact that it is way less expensive than what a lot of people are trying to charge for easels out there. I get approached by people all the time that are like, you should market that and you should sell it. You know, I would totally buy it. But in all honesty, it, I don't want to be in the business of selling easels. I would much rather you build your own easel and get creative. And that's what it comes down to. If you can't find the equipment that you need or you want, then just create it. You're, you're a creative, you're an artist. Uh, it is within you to find a solution to a problem that you may have. But Rafi, what if we don't have scrap wood piles in our backyard? Then you go to Home Depot or some place where you could buy wood and you get the wood that you need. So in the future, hopefully we'll be moving to a bigger place and in that bigger place we will have a bigger studio and if we have a bigger studio I am planning on building more spinning easels for my studio. If and when that happens I will post a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build the spinning easel. Right now I cannot build the spinning easel because I just don't have room in my studio. And that's it you guys. Uh, hopefully this helped you in some way to build your own spinning easel and thank you so much for watching you guys i totally appreciate you i absolutely adore you and if you like this and you want to watch more like this just click right over here to subscribe that's it say goodbye clee good day adios